Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about what is stationarity and why is it important when we build a time series model. Even before I proceed to demonstrate what is stationary series, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. One of the most important assumptions behind any time series model is that the data be stationary. If the data is not stationary, we have to stationarize the series before fitting a time series model. There are three types of stationarity. First is stationary with respect to mean. Second would be stationarity with respect to variance. And the third would be stationarity with respect to covariance. So let me repeat this. There are three types of stationarity. Stationarity with respect to mean, stationarity with respect to variance. And the third would be stationarity with respect to covariance. How do we check whether the series is stationary or non-stationary? One very popular statistical test that can be used is what is called as the ADF test or the augmented Dickey-Fuller's test. The second way would be through a simple time series plot. In this video, I'll be using a graphical representation to check whether the data is stationary or not. Let me show you the data set that I'll be working on. This is the data about the wholesale price index of rice. As you can see here, I've named this data as training data V1. There are five important columns, serial number, date, year, month, and the WPI of rice. The starting observation is January 2001. Then the values move to February 2001. And further, we have March 2001. The last observation here is April 2009. So I have 10 years of data. My apologies. I have nine years of data for the wholesale price index of rice. As I mentioned earlier, before any time series modeling, it's an absolute must that we check whether the data follows stationarity or not. This is a very important assumption. We cannot afford to overlook this particular assumption. My goal would be to filter, fit a time series model to the variable rise. How do you check for stationarity? The simple way to check for stationarity would be to go to the analyze menu. Here, I'll be selecting the option forecasting. Then I'll move on to what is called as the sequence charts. Let me reset the options. In the left side, you can see the list of variables that are present in the data set. I'm going to choose rise as the variable of interest. And when it comes to time axis label, let me choose date as the time axis label. I'll go ahead and click on the OK button. What you're seeing here is the output window. In the output window, you'll get the results of the analysis. When I scroll down, you can clearly see the WPI of rise. This is the distribution of the WPI of rise. In the x-axis, I have date, which starts from January 2001, and it goes all the way to January 2009. In the y-axis, you have wholesale price index of rise. The minimum value here is 160, and the maximum value is 240. What's very interesting here is that from January 2001 up to January 2009, there is not much of a trend. There is an element of trend, but it is not very substantial. You will be able to see a very conspicuous trend post September 2006, when the graph keeps climbing all the way till May 2008. The graph further climbs up 
post May 2008. So this clearly indicates that there is a effect of trend in the data. Because there is a trend in the data, we can conclude that the data is not stationary. I repeat, this variable is not stationary. The word stationary is opposite of the word trend. If there is trend, there is no stationarity. If there is stationarity, you do not have a trend. The moment we conclude by saying that there is a trend in this particular data, it obviously follows that our data is non-stationary. The question is, how do we stationarize this data? Remember, for any time series model, may it be ARIMA or exponential smoothing, it's absolutely important that we stationarize the data and then go ahead and build the time series model. To stationarize this particular data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my data set. Here, you can see there is what is called as the transform menu. A simple trick that we can use to stationarize the data would be through differencing. Let me choose transform. Here you have options called as create time series. Let me click on this particular option. This will open up a new dialog box, which is called as create time series. Let me reset the option. I'll be choosing the variable rise. Let me push this into the variables list. I'm going to make sure that the function that I've chosen is the difference function. You can see here, the difference function will be applied on the variable rise and a new variable called as rise underscore one will be created. I'm taking the first order of differencing. If this does not work, you can experiment with a second order differencing as well as a third order differencing. Since I want to keep it very, very simple, let me choose the first order of differencing. Let me click on the option, okay. This is taking me to the output window. I'm going to come back to the data set. What we're seeing here is a new variable called as rise underscore one is created. Here it says minus 1.0. How did we obtain minus 1.0? It is simply taking the difference of the second observation and the first observation. That is 163.8 minus 164.8 will be minus 1.0. Similarly, when you take the difference of the third observation and the second observation, that is 165.1 minus 163.8, you will be able to get 1.30. The same pattern is followed for the rest of the series and we have created a new variable which is called as the difference variable. Now, our goal is to check whether after taking the difference of the wholesale price index of rise is the new data stationary or not. How do I do this? We can go to the analyze menu. Then we have the forecasting option. Here within the forecasting option, we can go to the sequence charts. I had taken the variable rise earlier. Let me push this out. I'm going to take the new variable that is the first order of differencing to evaluate whether this particular data is stationary or not. Let me click on the option OK. You can see here, this is the output window. In the output window, you're able to get the new graph. As before, you have the data from Jan 2001 all the way up to January 2009. This is the distribution of the wholesale price index of rise after differencing the data. Clearly, to a large extent, the trend has been removed. I'm not seeing that the trend component has been completely removed. But when you compare this with the earlier graph, this is the earlier graph, clearly there was a upward trend. When I look at the present graph, the trend component has been removed. 
This goes to show that first order differencing is quite effective in addressing the problem of stationarity. In other statistical softwares, it could be R programming language or it could be Python programming language. We can also use the ADF test or the augmented Dickey Fuller's test to examine whether the series is stationary or not. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we've seen what exactly is stationary series, what are the three different types of stationary series. The three different types of stationary series would be stationary with respect to mean, stationary with respect to variance, and stationary with respect to covariance. And finally, we have also seen if the data is not stationary, how do we stationarize this? A simple trick called as differencing will help us stationarize the non-stationary data. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my videos. Thank you very much once again. Have a great day ahead.